Aaron Hunt, hash mark right, 15-yard line, a 25-yard effort with seven seconds remaining in the game. Jeff Scott to hold. It all comes down to this. Awaiting the snap. The spot, the kick. It is up and it is good. Tell you something, folks. Aaron Hunt earned that scholarship <laughs> that he received in this, this afternoon. This sideline, those people crying, those people falling on everybody, hugging. This is a great play.
Welcome everyone to Memorial Stadium Death Valley Clemson South Carolina for the 98th meeting all time in this fierce rivalry of the Palmetto State between South Carolina and Clemson Sean McDonough along with Ed Cunningham and Leslie Goodell delighted to have you with us an overflow crowd in attendance the stadium filled to capacity and then some. And the Clemson Tigers already on the field ready for the opening kickoff. The Tigers won the toss and deferred so Lou Holtz and the South Carolina Gamecocks will get the football first. Tony Lazaro kicks off for Clemson. That's Derek Watson who is back deep for the opening kickoff. Along with Ryan Brewer and Derek Watson a guy who they've got more involved at South Carolina in their special teams their best athlete on both offense and special teams had a block punt last week against Florida overcast and chilly day the temperature not expected to get out of the high 40s and the kickoff down to Derek Watson who dropped the ball at the three yard line and he slips down at the 20. Where the Gamecocks begin on offense, led by Phil Petty, the junior from Boiling Springs, South Carolina. 55% completions this season, throwing for 191 yards per game. His career high set earlier this year against Mississippi State when he threw for 305. He's playing on two sore ankles. And the Gamecocks open in the eye formation. And it's Watson with lots of room. It took the safety Robert Carswell to make the tackle after a gain of 13 out to the 33 yard line. Sean, South Carolina started the season about 90 to 95 percent one back, and they've gone to the two back set when they saw, found they were protecting some leads earlier in the year. They found a lot of success running downhill with Derek Watson in the one back formation he tends to do too many moves in the backfield when he gets a lead blocker he's much better going straight ahead and still with the eye and no tight end three wide receivers it's Watson again taking the pitch and another first down as he rumbles for 11 out to the 44 yard line where Nick Eason the defensive end took down Watson Watson's averaging just under 92 yards per game rushing 916 yards rushing for the season he's just a sophomore from Williamston South Carolina when you throw in last week's uh, punt block touchdown against Florida 11 touchdowns South Carolina on offense in 1999 only had eight complete touchdowns so he's three ahead of the entire team from last year the handoff to the fullback Andrew Pennock and he stopped for a loss Back of the 42, a loss of two. Pinnock can play fullback and tailback in this offense. Chad Carson made the tackle. And Pinnock is the big of the two. Derek Watson's kind of the slasher. Pinnock, 250 pounds, 245. He lost about 20 pounds from last year. He's the pounder, and then they get Derek Watson, who's the slippery guy and can take it the distance. Watson, the big play threat out of the backfield for South Carolina. Second down and 12. And he will operate out of the shotgun. And the pass nearly intercepted. Alex Ardley made the quick move on the ball and nearly picked it off. He's been outstanding at cornerback this season. Some of his colleagues in the secondary haven't been quite as effective, and that's a big reason why Clemson has been torched through the air in recent weeks. And Reggie Herring says this is the only guy that he allows to play very aggressively out there on the edge. Ardley, the only one that he will allow in press coverage that time. Very aggressive coverage by Ardley, reading Petty's eyes and making a break on the ball. Third down and 12, just underway. South Carolina visiting Clemson. And they'll stop the play. There was movement along the offensive line. Shane Hall was backing up early. 
Southeastern Conference officials today. Steve Landis is the referee in his 30th year of college football officiating. For the snap, movement by the offensive line. Five yard penalty. Third down. The shotgun formation allows you to do some silent snap count. That time Shane Hall just got that big frame moving backwards a little bit before the snap and couldn't get himself stopped. They're affecting this early on the ground. Now they're forced, it seems, to go to the air again on third down and 17. They're showing blitz. There is a flag down to the line of scrimmage. The Tigers appear to be offside. The pass incomplete intended for Ryan Brewer. He took a bit of a shot from Charles Hafley after the ball sailed out of bounds. They had linebackers Keith Adams and Braxton K. Williams up on the line blitzing, and it looked like the Tigers were jumping in the neutral zone when the ball was snapped. Defense was in the neutral zone at the snap. Five yard penalty. Repeat third down. If you take a look at the replay, Keith Adams, and it looks like Braxton K. Williams are offsides in the neutral zone. No question, good call by the officials. But Reggie Herring told us when we were talking to him earlier in the week, he's going to be very aggressive with his defensive calls. He wants to get South Carolina on their heels and have to pick up those blitzes. Third down and 12. Ready out of the shotgun again. Under pressure throws. It is caught for a first down. Brian Scott into Clemson territory. To the 37 yard line, a gain of 21. And the same problem for the Clemson Tiger defense recurs early in this game. They're giving up big plays through the air lately. And this play is all set up because of the soft coverage by Crutchfield, the corner. And the safety Carswell cannot get over. There's just no, they don't make, there's not making that receiver change his route at all. Watson, the tailback on first and 10. Slides down to the 32-yard line. Khalid Vaughn made the tackle. Nearly two and a half minutes played. South Carolina trying to end a three-game losing streak against their arch rivals, the Clemson Tigers. Clemson's won the last three head-to-head. -head. But the good news for the Gamecocks, the visiting team has won eight of the last nine in this rivalry. Second down and five. Petty throws on the run. First down, Jamel Kelly, their leading receiver. Chopped down at the 25-yard line by Charles Hafley. Hafley's had an excellent season. And safety for the Tigers. That's a gain of seven. Kelly started all the way across the formation. A rollout by Petty to the right. Kelly just right in front of his quarterback the whole way. That's Crutchfield trying to give Chase a very long way, and he gets blown up by Ryan Brewer. Nice job by Brewer coming back and setting a block for his receiver mate. Eighth play of the opening possession of the football game. North Carolina facing a third and 17, converted to third and 12 after an offside penalty against Clemson. That was the key play so far. Petty going for the end zone. Diving catch out of bounds. Jamel Kelly with a great catch. Alex hardly beaten. He had the coverage. And a good throw by Petty, but just a little bit wide. And Kelly couldn't stay on the field to play. Got good separation. Not great speed by Kelly, but nice separation. Lays out the catch it. Good call by the official out of bounds, but what a great effort by Kelly. And very early on, Skip Holtz, the offensive coordinator for South Carolina, showing a lot of different looks to this Clemson defense. Spread formation here. Four wide receivers. Watson stays into the right and takes the handoff on the draw. Well defended by Braxton K. Williams. He took down Watson after a gain of three. It'll be third down and seven for the Gamecocks. Braxton K. Williams is kind of the forgotten linebacker for Clemson when you have Chad Carson who's averaging nearly 13 tackles per game and a, a butt kiss finalist in Keith Adams but he's having a nice year four sacks very aggressive getting up field and Clemson will always bring their outside backers. They stay with the spread formation on third down and seven. Bear in mind both teams have problems with field goal kicking. 
We're in field goal range right now. And that pass is dropped. It would have been a first down for Brian Scott, but he dropped it. Robert Carswell was closing in, but that ball should have been caught for a first down. Instead, it brings on the first field goal attempt of Jason Corsi's career. And he's a senior walk on who hasn't attempted a field goal in a game since his senior year in high school when he made one out of two in Lake Forest Illinois. He took over last week and made all three of his point afters against Florida. And this is a 40 yard field goal try from the right hash mark. He hooked it. Why. A word for his new kicker. It was pointed out to Lou that, of course, he hadn't tried one since high school. Lou said that's probably a good thing. <laughs> the reason in this instance, the reason he went with Corsi is because he thought the senior wouldn't talk himself out of a kick before he kicked it. That time just got too much of the snap on it. So Clemson has the football for the first time today. After a drive of more than four minutes yields nothing on the scoreboard for South Carolina. Woodrow Dantzler, with the quarterback, hands off to the leading rusher, Travis Zachary. And he's out to the 30. A good gain on first down. Zachary got seven. And he has a chance to reach 1,000 yards for the season with 72 yards today. Andre Offing made the tackle. Zachary, we're just talking about Braxton K. Williams on defense. Great year, kind of in the. Back behind the numbers, Dantzler has put up and Rod Gardner. He's having a sensational season. Dantzler appears to be changing the play. Gamecocks bouncing around, bluffing one blitz, then bringing another. And a quick pass caught by Jackie Robinson. He's chopped down right near the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Those of you just joining us, welcome everyone to Memorial Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina. Underway in the first quarter, South Carolina drove down to the 23 yard line of Clemson its first possession and missed the 40 yard field goal. This is Clemson on offense for the first time and converting on its first series with a first down. That was a third down and three pass from Woodrow Dantzler to Travis Zachary. He's out to the 37 yard line of Clemson, a gain of six and a first down. It was an impressive opening drive, Ed, for South Carolina. But their kicker is Jason Corsi, walk on senior, kicking his first field goal attempt ever in college, and he hooked it wide right from 40 yards. And wide a good left, I should say. Good start like they had last week against Florida. The two block kicks got out to an early lead, this time not able to pay off a very good drive. Great mix and match by Skip Holtz on that first drive. Tommy Bowden, the Clemson head coach in his second season here. And they anticipate he'll be here for a while, signed a contract extension earlier in the week. And we'll keep him here through 2007, boost his salary to about 1.1 million per year. And Lou Holtz in his second season at South Carolina, engineering another of his patented turnarounds. The six different program of which he's worked his magic. Zachary took a pop as he crossed the 40 and made it to the 42. DeAndre Island, the true freshman safety, made the tackle for South Carolina. And there is a flag down on the play, thrown in the defensive secondary. This defense of South Carolina lines up in a lot of different alignments. Their base is a 3-3-5. Three, three, three down linemen, three linebackers, five defensive backs. We've seen that in every snap so far from Clemson. And it does a really good, when you're playing against a team like Clemson that spreads it out and still runs, you play a lot of zone, it allows guys to converge on the run, especially with a quarterback like Dantzler who can take off. Looks like it might have been Rod Gardner and Andre Goodman. Well, they were jousting after the play, and the penalty is offset. And it looks like the play stands, the ball at the 43 yard line. Offsetting penalties, still second down. And this is something South Carolina, there's no huddle. They see it every day in practice there. 
Offense also goes with the no huddle, so no big adjustment for South Carolina with Clemson's offense. They punch three wide receivers to Dantzler's left. He throws on the run, looking for Gardner, and it was well defended by Sheldon Brown. That's the best Clemson receiver going against the best cornerback. When we were talking to Charlie Strong, the defensive coordinator, Sheldon Brown, by far their best cover guy, he was saying, yeah, we play right and left corners. But you got the feeling that Sheldon Brown was going to look up and try to find Rod Gardner a few times. Excellent coverage that time by Brown. Well, what a terrific job Charlie Strong has done really in both seasons at South Carolina as the defensive coordinator. The defense wasn't the problem last year when they were winless. The major struggles on offense. Here comes a blitz. Dantzler steps up. Gets away from the defenders. Has a first down in the South Carolina territory at the 42-yard line. A 15-yard run by Dantzler. He's still bothered by an injured ankle, but Ed, he looks a lot better running than we saw him a few weeks ago against Georgia Tech when he was really hobbled. He has a tendon in his left ankle that pops out every now and then. Right here, he looks as close to 100% as we've seen him in a long time. Slid a little funny there, but Tommy Bowden has to be very happy with his quarterback running like that. Zachary, the object of the fake. Shannon Wadley was not fooled as he dropped Dantzler for a loss back to the 44 loss of two thanks to the tackle by Wadley the junior from Swainsboro Georgia in his first year as a starter for the Gamecocks and Charlie Strong really had to do a sell job to Lou Holtz to set this defense up but the personnel that South Carolina has fits this they have a lot of fast linebackers and defensive back Dantzler throws complete to Joe Don Reams Back in action after missing the last ball game against Florida State with a sprained neck. Short game on the play. They'll spot the ball at the 39. And will bring up third down and seven. Chancellor, we were talking to him yesterday, he said that his injury is something that can't get worse. It won't get better till surgery, but it's really been in his head has been the biggest problem. He's been worried about it so much. And they have confidence in Willie Simmons, who's come off the bench a couple of times this year for Dancer. If they need to go to him, they will, without hesitation. Dancer looks sharp. First down on the throw to Kevin Youngblood. A redshirt freshman who's been a more frequent target in recent weeks. Down at the 24-yard line. A gain of 15 and a first down for Clemson. And, Sean, yesterday I spent a lot of time watching the film of the Florida State game. And, okay, we've seen Danzler run, and he looks fine. But he didn't even look good throwing the ball against Florida State. He could not step into the ball. And right now, he, like I said, he looks like he did in the first six ball games of the season. A week off after the Florida State game certainly seems to have helped. It was the first off week of this season for Clemson. Oh, did Dancer get buried, but it's a good game. John Stamper put his stamp firmly on number one. Woodrow Dantzler. But he actually knocked him ahead for an additional yard for the quarterback. I knew you'd get a stamp in there pretty quickly. This is a great shot, but you know what? Ooh, this actually probably helps the confidence of Dancer to be able to take a shot like that with the injury, get back, and call the next play. Here's Zachary trying to turn the corner, and he's pulled down from behind by DeAndre Island, a true freshman with another nice play. They lost Antoine Neesmith, one of their best defensive backs, early in the year due to injury. Island has stepped in. And he is getting better with every game. His first game in against Vanderbilt, he had to start a true freshman, didn't really know the defense. He had 12 tackles and an interception. Charlie Strong did not expect that kind of performance out of a true freshman. 13th play of the drive. Each team has marched on its first possession. South Carolina missed a field goal. Now it's Zachary taking them inside the 10. Kenny Harney made the tackle. At the nine yard line. Hardy has also been battling injuries. He was kicked in the leg earlier in the season and actually fractured a bone. You can see that he's limping a little bit as he runs off. Bruised the knee against Tennessee right when he came back. So this South Carolina team, it's like the ankle team. They have about seven guys who play with bad ankles. Terry Witherspoon in at fullback leading the way for Zachary down to the one to the goal line. And stopped just short of the end zone. Again, it was DeAndre Island, the safety making the tackle. He didn't get the touchdown, but it looks like a first down. It'll be first and goal from inside the one for the Tigers. Mentioned in early out, Travis Zachary is kind of the forgotten guy. What an amazing season for Zachary. He's 11th in the NCAA with 16 touchdowns scored. If he scores, which you get a feeling they're going to give it to him, he'll 
tie the single season record. Now Dantzler trying to take it in, but he's stuffed short of the goal line. Travis Zachary scored 16 touchdowns last year, 16 this year. He already holds the Clemson career record for touchdowns. He's trying to tie Lester Brown for the single season. But this close, they might just go with Danzler again. Now it's Zachary, and he didn't get in. Well, they've needed his inches, but on two plays, they haven't been able to come up with those inches. Rashad Faison and Marco Hutchinson combining to stop Zachary. The strength of the South Carolina defense up front is right in the middle with Cleveland Pinckney, their nose guard, the strongest guy on this team. Getting in there, burying under this light offensive line for Clemson. They only average about 260 up front for Clemson. Next to tight ends on the field. Zachary again. One Jing touchdown. Zachary adding to his Clemson career record. Aaron Hunt on to try the extra point. Jeff Scott is the holder. Henry Owen the snapper. And on the extra point by Aaron Hunt, Clemson leads seven to nothing. For those of you just joining us, welcome to Death Valley, Clemson, South Carolina. This fierce rivalry in state between South Carolina and Clemson. Each team has had the ball once. South Carolina drove but missed the 40 yard field goal in its possession. And then Clemson marched nicely. 77 yards and scored on that touchdown run of one yard by Travis Zachary. So 425 left in the first quarter. The Tigers lead the Battle of South Carolina 7-0. Team has had the ball once and Clemson leads seven to nothing. South Carolina took the opening kickoff, marched 57 yards in 10 plays, but Jason Corsi attempting his first ever field goal at the collegiate level missed from 40 yards. Clemson took over and went 77 yards in 16 plays and scored the touchdown on the one yard run by Travis Zachary. Derek Watson returns the kickoff, but only to the 21 yard line. Chad Speck made the tackle. We'll return to Death Valley right after this. First down, Derek Watson carries to the 29-yard line. Robert Carswell, the safety, made the tackle. Eight yards on the gain for Watson. It'll be second down and two with four minutes left in the first quarter. A nice job early on, Sean, by this offensive line. A bunch of guys, we talked about ankles, battling ankle injuries. The right side of this offensive line doing a very nice job opening some holes on this Clemson defense. I think they broke the huddle with 12 men. Flag thrown by Steve Landis. Before the snap, the offense broke the huddle with 12 men. That's a five yard penalty. First down. We saw Derek Watson went off late, but Lou Holtz is not satisfied. It's going to be the Chili's starting lineup. It is a revamped offensive line today for Lou Holtz with Travell Wharton, their best offensive tackle, out with an ankle injury. He may try to play. Shane Hall and Melvin Page are the tackles. Watson, Pinnock in the backfield, Hill, a blocker at tight end, Kelly, their leading receiver, and Scott had a big drop in their first possession. Here's Pinnock up the middle, getting the penalty yardage back as he reaches the 30. Tackled there by Chad Carson. Now the Clemson defense. Up front, they just try to occupy the blockers and let the linebackers make the tackles. Bryant, the leading tackler up front, he's 11th on the team in tackles. Adams and Carson, two and one respectively in tackles. Alex Ardley, their outstanding quarterback. They've struggled at the other corner with Crutchfield and Mance. Hayfield and Carswell veteran safeties. On third down and two, the first down picked up by big Andrew Pinnock. 245 pounds. He can play either fullback or tailback. Chad Carson, their leading tackler, made the stop for Clemson. Let's check out the Dell game solutions when South Carolina is on offense. Well, it would have looked really bright if we'd have got these in before South Carolina's first drive because they already are pounding 
at Clemson. Use some mass, max protection, leave some guys in, pick up those outside blitzes, and for Clemson defense, bring the kitchen sink. We've talked about Petty's bad ankles. Get some pressure on him. He's going to have a tough time getting out of the pocket. No flag. There is a flag now, and the whistles are actually stopping the play. He was moving along the line. Took a moment for the play to be whistled dead. It is a Southeastern Conference officiating crew today. And that is the conference in which South Carolina plays. And Steve Landis is the referee. Looked like the official was saying that the center maybe juggled the ball before For the he snap. snapped it. Defense violated the neutral zone rules. Five yard penalty. First down. Tommy Bowden seems perplexed about that development in his second season here six and six last year and eight wins this year but they started eight and all mm -hmm. and they had visions of a national championship dancing in their heads but the schedule got tougher at the end of the season and a big problem lately as they have dropped two in a row to Georgia Tech and Florida State they've given up big plays and here's another Derek Watson on his way only one man can catch him and he will not Touchdown, 61 yards, Derek Watson. And a late flag thrown at the five-yard line. face mask penalty but that can go either way if the running backs allowed to put his hand on the face mask of the defender but not yank or pull on it. During the run, unsportsmanlike conduct mm. by the offense, by rule the touchdown counts and the penalty will be administered on the extra point. Well, that's interesting. From up here, it looked like he was just going to make a stiff arm. Obviously, he made a gesture. Maybe he taunted him on the air. He pointed his finger yes. at him, and it's really for the taunting. It looked like he was going to put up a stiff arm. Obviously, that's what uh, he's telling his coach right now is, no, coach, I was just sticking that arm up there to fend off the defender. And they put the pressure on the new kicker, Jason Corsi, just his second week as the starting kicker. Has to make a 35-yard extra point, and he made it to tie the game. 7-7 late in the first quarter on the touchdown run by Watson. Seven-seven the score here in Clemson College Football on ABC Sports, brought to you by the 2001 Aztec from Pontiac, quite possibly the most versatile vehicle on the planet. By Chili's Ranch Hand Filet, tender, juicy, flame grilled, and served on a bed of awesome blossom strings. By Courtyard by Marriott, the hotel designed by business travelers, and by National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. Jason Corsi will kick off. Bernard Rambert back for the kickoff along with Brian Mance. A lot of similarities between these two teams. And one of them is that neither team has really excelled this year on special teams. Kickoff down to Rambert at the five. The backup tailback trying to go across the field. And he returns it across the 25 yard line where he was tackled by Jeremiah Garrison. Eric Watson with his fourth touchdown run of 58 yards or longer this season. And this is all uh, because of the spread offense. When you run the spread offense, a lot of people think you're doing it to throw the ball. But at South Carolina, third in the SEC this year in rushing, Carswell, the safety, had to go over because of the twin set to his left, had a bad angle coming back and couldn't make the tackle. Already 100 yards rushing right on the butt before Watson here in the first quarter. And just six carries. Dance, the throw is almost intercepted. Dennis Quinn in that zone blitz look, the defensive end retreating off the line of scrimmage in the coverage. He had two interceptions against Georgia, and he nearly had another against Clemson. The biggest reason that Charlie Strong wanted to go to this defense was to create confusion, and that time Dancer did not see the defense. 
And the pitch was not handled by Rambert. He fell on it for a loss back at the 21 yard line. The Chili's offensive unit will go quickly because they go quickly. Watkins, Merritt, Young, Mugros, and Bird up front. It's Witherspoon, Zachary, Woodward to the tight end, Watts and Gardner, the wide receivers. Third down and 13. Under two minutes left, first quarter. Plenty of action as usual when the game Cox and Tigers get together. Wide receiver screen to Rod Gardner, and he is short of the first down by about a yard. He needed to cross the 34. He came up just shy of the 33. Bring up fourth down and likely our first punt of the game. Quinn, Caldwell, Pinckney, and Edwards. Edwards, the standout playmaker up front. Just the two linebackers with Wadley and Offen and five defensive backs. Jamie Somani with a nice punt driving Ryan Brewer back. It bounces over his head. He decides after some thought to pick it up a bad decision. He got swung down by Kevin Youngblood. They'll spot the ball at the eight yard line. 58 yard punt to change the field position from Jamie Somani. Under a minute left of the first quarter. 7-7 the score. And South Carolina will begin at its own eight-yard line. And the outstanding punt by Jamie Somani and the coverage by Kevin Youngblood. Phil Petty is the Gamecocks quarterback. The junior from Boiling Springs, South Carolina. And he looks to throw after the play action pass. Nice catch made by James Atkinson. The junior college transfer in his first year at USC with a nice catch on a low throw. And he's tackled with a first down at the 28 yard line by Daryl Crutchfield. A gain of 20. And this is the exact play that South Carolina ran earlier, both to the side of Crutchfield. Crutchfield playing off. Safety Carswell has to get deep to. Keep the South Carolina receivers in front of him. And that middle of the field behind the linebackers with the soft coverage has been open early in this game. Now the shotgun now, the handoff to Watson. Following the blocking of the fullback, Travis Lewis, and he's out of bounds near another first down. Robert Carswell the tackle. Let's check in for an update with John Saunders at Times Square Stadium. John, here on the Burger King update, Oklahoma and Texas Tech. Cliff Kingsbury back to pass. He's picked off by J.T. Thatcher, who takes it 84 yards for the touchdown. His second interception return for a touchdown of the season. And number one, Oklahoma, jumps on top of Texas Tech, 7 to nothing. Sean. Oklahoma survived the scare last week against Texas A&M. An easier challenge, you would think, today. There was a late flag on the last play. play was over. There was a personal foul against the offense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Second down. So, one thing that will drive a coach crazy that's two penalties for 15 yards on his team and lose arguing as much as he can. But these officials in a rivalry game like this have to keep watch. And they're his officials. They're from the <laughs> Southeastern Conference. He knows who to go to to complain. You saw the 7 and 14 record fans of this part of the country well aware of the route to 7 and 14. They were 0 and 11 last year. And now 7 and 3 this season. It was second down and 16 when they put the ball back in play. When we talked with Lou Holtz during the week, it was kind of a typical Lou Holtz commentary on Wednesday. We're not a very good football team. I don't think we'll be ready to play at Clemson. We were heartbroken after we lost to Tennessee in the last 26 seconds. And then we got ahead last week against Florida 21 to 3. And our team is decimated by what happened in losing that game when the Gators scored 38 unanswered points. So we don't know if it was just Lou being Lou if he really believed that. But if he did believe it, he has to be pleased with the way they came out today. Second and 16. Petty. Throws on the run, batted down by Alex Ardley. He was looking for Jamel Kelly, 
But another big play by Ardley. He's broken up a couple of passes here in the first quarter, which is 12 seconds remaining. And very early on, you see what this Clemson defense, the way it's set, Alex Ardley is their cover guy. And this is twice now that Petty has gone over to his side, and Ardley has made a play on the ball. Good pressure by Clemson. Petty trying to throw on the run. But that's just a great break on the ball. And Ardley, if I'm South Carolina, I'd keep going to the other side. Leave this guy alone. Third down and 16. A personal foul play looms large. Here comes the blitz, and Petty throws it away. They want a grounding call. And there is no flag at the moment. Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator, is lucky he didn't get flagged. He was about five yards out of the field, pointing over the shoulder of the official nearest him, looking for that grounding call. And there's no question, Sean. Watch to see if Petty gets outside of that line right there. No way. That's a grounding call, and Reggie Herring had the right, he had the right to run out of the field, but he had the call right because there was no question Petty was getting rid of that ball to not get sacked and did not get outside of the pocket. Tyler Dean, the sophomore to punt. Adam Holmes, the snapper. Brian Mance is back for the punt. He's standing at his own 38-yard line. Final seconds of the first quarter. Short punt, but a good bounce for the Gamecocks. And the 38-yard punt ends the quarter. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. We're back at Death Valley. Sean McDonough, Ed Cunningham, and Ed in that first quarter, lots of offense. And I think if you're the Clemson Tigers, you still have to have concerns about your defense, giving up a lot of big plays of late and again in the first quarter. It's been one side for Clemson that's given them trouble, and the South Carolina has already shown that. The offense in trouble right now. Travis Zachary thrown for a loss by Dennis Quinn. Nice play by the defensive end, the sophomore from Washington, Georgia. There's yet another flag on the field. Already been six penalties in the first quarter, and a flag on the first play of the second quarter. And both sides of the ball on defense showing very aggressive game plans. We knew that coming out of Clemson, we were going to see a lot of blitzing. South Carolina, who likes to play a lot of zone, will bring some linebackers. They've got a lot of them to bring. But early on, they're doing a really nice job of getting upfield. Personal foul on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. At some point, Lou Holtz is going to have to call his team over and settle everybody down. This is getting ridiculous. That is 45 yards of penalties because of things that are happening not involved with the game. Out of the shotgun. Dantzler handed it off to Travis Zachary. He gets a yard. It was Quinn who made the tackle again. And this defense by South Carolina, very effective right now, other than the 15-yard penalty. Charlie Strong, they studied the film of Mississippi State, Memphis, and Southern Miss to come up with this defense. For the fit. season. Yeah. The alignment fit. they've been using for the year, the 3-3-5 three, three, alignment. Just a three-man rush, but they're ready to pounce on Dantzler. They had it looked like the entire defense, with the exception of the front three, spying Dantzler as soon as he took off across the line. There are about five white shirts running at him, and they closed quickly at the 45-yard line, led by Willie Sams and Willie Offer. You got your three defensive linemen, and then what you're going to have is a one, two, three, four, five across zone with a three-deep umbrella behind it. Very hard because as a zone, they can peek in, and like you said, they're all spying on the quarterback. Four-man Rush, Dantzler spins away from it and has perhaps a first down. This is going to be very close. From here, it seems that he has it just inside the 40-yard line. Again, it was Willie Sams who made the tackle. Doesn't appear to be anything wrong with Dantzler's ankle today. They're going to measure. 
And they'll likely go for it even if they don't get it. But from here, it looks like he has it by an inch or two. The one thing they worry about with Dantzler's left ankle is it has that tendon that pops out. As long as it stays in, he's okay. What he told me yesterday that when it pops out, it stays out, but there's nothing he can do about it. And he got talked to Travis Zachary and Rod Gardner pulled him aside and said, hey, you're not the same guy mentally that you were before the injury. You've got to get back to that. And Sean, very evident he has today. It is a first down for Tommy Bowden. His offensive coordinator, Rich Rodriguez, calls the plays. Bowden actively involved in the offense as well. The 32 and 12 record includes his two seasons at Tulane. Now in his second year here, Dantzler moves away from center. Bernard Rambert in it, the tailback position. And he takes the handoff and zooms through a big hole. And it appears to be close to another first down. He is close to another first down. He might have it inside the 30. DeAndre Island made the tackle. Gain of nearly 10 for Rambert, the sophomore from Somerville, South Carolina. You mentioned Rich Rodriguez, the offensive coordinator for Clemson. They have so many different things they can do out of this shotgun formation. It's really like a two-back set when you only have one running back. Because of Dantzler, he can fake that handoff, and then later he'll roll out and keep it himself. And second and less than a yard, Dantzler keeps for the first down. And down to 12 and a half minutes left in the first half. 7-7 the score. Third time this season that we've seen Clemson, and you would think with this wide-open offense they would take shots on second and one, but Rodriguez, Coach Rodriguez told us that him and Coach Bowden, they feel like just get a first down and then more will come after that. Coach Rodriguez referred to the offense as a rhythm offense. And some speculation this could be the last game here for Richard Rodriguez. He's been contacted by a couple of schools about head coaching vacancies. The hot rumor is West Virginia. Where he played. Dance the throws to Joe Don Ream. Down to the 20 yard line. Gain of nine. They're doing a lot of damage on first down in this possession. Andre Offing and DeAndre Island made the tackle on Ream. And here goes Clemson hurrying up to the line of scrimmage, trying to catch South Carolina a little winded. And the substitution runs on late. It's Kenny Heine who's really limping as he comes on the field. High pitch. It was handled by Rambert, and he gets nothing. Dennis Quinn and Andre Offing combine on the tackle. Another first half Quinn is having. In his first year as a starter, the sophomore. Charlie Strong said he's been steady and solid all year long. And he's one of the guys, when you run that three defensive lineman, you better have some ends who can get some pressure up the field. Rambert the lone back on third down and one. And he slides through some traffic in the backfield and picks up the first down. Nice run by Rambert. He played on a state championship team here in the state of South Carolina, Somerville High School, a 15 and 0 team. His senior year was school's 12th state title. One of the great programs in high school football in America, coached by John McKissick, the nation's all-time winningest coach. First and 10, Clemson trying to take the lead for the second time today. Red formation this time, three receivers to the right. Dantzler trying to dance away from the traffic and finally stopped for loss back at the 21 yard line. Andre Goodman, the cornerback, with the primary tackle. Kenny Harney was in there as well. These are the types of plays that we're used to seeing Woody Dantzler make. He's dead to rights in the backfield. A nice job by South Carolina on the blitz. Getting up the field. Runs out of the arm tackle of 96. Cecil Caldwell, a big defensive lineman. Tenth play of the drive for the Tigers. Dantzler rolls left and throws a bullet. Short of a first down to Justin Watts. He's down at the 12-yard line. First catch of the day for Watts, the senior from Florence, South Carolina, who this year will earn his fifth letter due to injuries. He'll be the first five-year letter winner in football here at Clemson since Stumpy Banks back in 1919. But Justin has never scored a touchdown. And that's the one goal that he has remaining as an individual. And the players are well aware of it. They'd love to see him score today against their arch rivals. 
Zachary wanted to throw it back to Dantzler. Throws instead over the middle, and it's intercepted. Terrible decision by Travis Zachary as he threw it up for grabs, and it was picked off. Cleveland Pinckney. The defensive lineman with the pick, his first of the year. And there is a flag thrown late. Dancer right there, sneaking back. Zachary going to throw it back. Three guys in coverage, and Pinckney, who was on the defensive line, did not drop off. Just a nice job of reading the play, running down the line of scrimmage. Very heads-up play for a nose guard. After the play was over, personal foul, lace hit. I guess it, defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Cleveland Pinckney, the senior from Sumter, South Carolina, junior college transfer in his second year at USC with a big play. And the Tigers are denied deep in Gamecock territory. Well, I'm not sure either one of us has seen it all, but after uh, that picture, we've come close to seeing just about all of it. That must be tough to go to sleep at night with that thing on his face. Clemson had the ball for 12 plays before Zachary threw the interception, so it's still a 7-7 game. This is Derek Watson for South Carolina. Patiently waiting for the hole that would not appear, and finally Chad Carson ran him out of bounds. It'll be second down and long, but well, that was a big penalty on the personal mm -hmm. foul after Pinckney's interception. It Doug, South Carolina out of the hole without them having to do any of the digging. When you're on offense and you're inside your own 10-yard line, you have what's called the bring it out offense. Very limited. Bring everybody in tight, run the ball. When you get outside the 15, now you can run your entire playbook. Second down and eight. Phil Petty zips one for a first down out to the 43-yard line to Jamel Kelly. Second catch for the Gamecocks leading receiver. Darrell Crutchfield had the coverage that time. And this is the third time that Phil Petty has gone to this route. It's just a deep in, kind of a short post route. Over to Petty, working one-on-one -on -one with Crutchfield. And if I'm Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator, I've got to start thinking about getting Robert Carswell, my safety, rolled over to that side. You need a little help covering that side of the field. Three wide receivers. And the pitch back to Watson. Got to get to the corner, and he was upended at the corner by Altroy Bodrick. Monday night, it's a must-win situation for Washington when they face St. Louis on Monday Night Football. Live at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC. And on Sunday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern, the Jaguars face the Steelers. Had a bunch of penalties in this game. Can you imagine the Steelers? They've had three Monday phone calls telling them, hey, sorry, we blew the call that cost you the game. I mean, Bill Cowher is probably chewing on the phone when he was... <laughs> Taking those calls, three receivers to the left, second and 11. They're showing blitz again. And the blitz works. Keith Adams into the offensive backfield to drop Watson. Adams, one of the best linebackers in the nation. As a matter of fact, he's one of the three finalists for the Buckus Award as the nation's best linebacker. But he was questionable with a concussion suffered in practice on Tuesday. He's out there and playing well. Very questionable. And as a matter of fact, gets a little help there from Holloman. Very surprised to see him today. He was knocked out cold, Sean, a junior college transfer offensive lineman down on the scout team as we look at the Buckus list. Knocked him out cold, and he was very, very dizzy for a couple of days. 122 tackles on the season for Adams. Another blitz, and Petty is sacked by Chad Carson. He's the other standout linebacker for Clemson. The team leader in tackles with 128 coming in. And a brilliant student here at Clemson. He intends to be a Rogue Scholar candidate next semester. Chad Carson coming completely unblocked. When you blitz, when you all out blitz, you have to bring more than the offensive line can block. That time the right side of the offensive line for South Carolina should have squeezed down and picked up the blitzing linebacker. But there was one more Clemson guy than they had blocked. Tyler Dean, the wobbly punt, fair catch called for and made by Brian Mance at the 35-yard line. 35-yard punt. 
by Dean. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough by Pacific Life. Annuities, insurance, investments use the power of Pacific Life. By BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. And by Dell. Woody Dantzler. Airing it out on first down as receiver fell down. Joe Don Reams was wide open at the South Carolina 40, but while the ball was in the air, he put the brakes on and slipped. And it could have been a big play. Instead, it's just an incompletion, and Dantzler's now 8 of 11. Going to have what's called a wheel route here. Joe Don Reams runs behind Gardner. Gardner's just kind of the decoy wide open. That's a very tough throw for Dantzler, though, on the run. 20, 25 yards down the field. Tough to get an accurate throw in running to your right. Dantzler running to his right again as another man open. That one through the hands of the tight end, Morgan Woodward. Woodward's the junior from Florence, South Carolina. Walk on his first three years here on scholarship this year. Had very few programs recruiting him out of high school. Could have gone to Army, but failed the physical because of asthma. Played at South Florence High School for Justin Watts' dad, Mike. Third down and ten. Dantzler with time, just a three-man game talk rush. Now Dancer's going to try to run for the first down, and he paid the price for that decision. Shannon Wadley popped him down to the ground at the 37-yard line. Low three downs and out for the Clemson offense. And that's where Charlie Strong's defense is very strong. When you don't blitz, you drop everybody off. Again, it's a 3-3-5. Watch the umbrella of the safeties. They can read the quarterback's eyes. Great coverage, especially down here on Gardner. They've got nowhere to go. Even though Gardner was open, the pressure had already got there with the three-man rush. Jamie Sulmany punting. Boom, the 58-yarder in the first quarter. This one off the side of his foot. The shank at the 40. Five and now six yard line. The punt getting shorter as the official keeps walking. Just a 19 yard punt. <laughs> Defensive coordinator Reggie Herring of Clemson with his unit back on the field. In a 7 7 game with five and a half minutes left in the first half. Excellent field position for. South Carolina and a flag down. Movement along the line. Terry Bryant jumped across. Was he drawn? Uh, the Gamecocks are saying no. <laughs> the offensive lineman will uh, always tell you who was the guilty party. Well, was right or wrong? Contact, Contact by the defense. defense. Five yard penalty. First down. They had one of the big questions coming into this game about this Clemson defense. Would they get back on track? Earlier in the year, they were terrific, but against a pretty weak schedule. The last three games, they've been attacked through the air. Look at those numbers. The last three games against North Carolina, Georgia Tech, and Florida State, they've given up an average of 430 yards per game just in passing. It's a running play on first and five, and a first down for Derek Watson as he tripped down at the 43-yard line. Upended by Chad Carson. And with Clemson on defense against Florida State gave up 521 yards through the air. They've had three quarterbacks in a row throw for over 300 yards. Ronald Curry of North Carolina got it started. George Godsey who's turned into one of the finest quarterbacks in the ACC threw for over 400 yards and then the great game by Wanky two weeks ago. Been wounded too much through the air today. North Carolina with 69 yards passing. But there was the big run, 61 yards for the touchdown from Derek Watson, who's stuffed this time by Jason Holloman. No gain on the play. Let's go down to the sideline and welcome in Leslie Goodell. Sean, you mentioned earlier our conversation with Lou Holtz on Wednesday, how he said that they weren't a very good team. They weren't responding well to their loss to Florida. Well, I spoke with him before the game, and he said up until Thursday they didn't respond. But the one thing they were doing was they were working hard, but they didn't show any emotion. He said it wasn't until yesterday that they really emotionally got into it. He figured they'd be emotionally fresh for today's game. Something about the sight of your arch rival can get the emotion level back up. Petty sack back at midfield. Terry Bryant 
With the sack, Charles Hayfley, the safety, also in there on a blitz. It's the fourth sack of the season for Bryant, the senior from Savannah, Georgia, in his third year as a starter here at Clemson. The one thing, Reggie Aaron, we just mentioned the numbers that this Clemson defense has given up in the last three games, said he is going to be aggressive. This is an all-out, what's called a zero blitz. Nobody's home, including the safety, Hayfley, who's coming in to clean up the sack. Third down and 17 from the 50-yard line. Under four minutes left. First half, 7-7 seven, seven score. Just a four-man rush. Petty going deep to the near sideline. Caught, flag thrown. Brian Scott with a touchdown, but he might have pushed off on Alex Ardley. Well, there's no question that this call has to go against Scott. He pushed Ardley, who had great position of the ball, right in the back to get separation. The official's still conferring, but the Clemson defenders have been celebrating, and that looked like a very obvious call. Brian Scott delivered a forearm to the back of... Alex Ardley and that freed up Scott to make the catch and they're going to bring the ball back. And one adjustment that South Carolina might want to think about making when they go into halftime is stop throwing the number 28 side. That's three balls on the offense. Bottom of your screen right down here. Take a look as Scott gets those arms extended into the back to push off. Hardly had great position on the ball, was spinning around trying to make a play on it. Almost had an interception on an out route earlier in the game. Hardly playing very well against South Carolina. And certainly the official, the field judge, Mike Washington, had great position on the play, too. He was right there and made the correct call. So the Gamecocks are in reverse. Third down and 32. Their own 35-yard line. Watson gets 10. He's well short of the first down. Keith Adams made the tackle. And the Gamecocks will punt. And that's where you see the effect Lou Holtz has on his son, Skip Holtz. Skip has gotten Dad to loosen up a little bit with this offense, run the spread, move it around some. That time, I believe, Coach Holtz probably told his son, let's just get some more field position and punt this thing away at third and 32. Tyler Dean punts. Very high punt. Fair catch called for and made by Brian Mance. And a flag thrown. A couple of flags down in the play. And it's been a penalty filled first half. There have been 10 penalties already. This will be the 11th. South Carolina has been flagged six times so far. Clemson four times. And really, Sean, all sloppy penalties, things that can be avoided. I mean, you can't fault Scott for trying to make a play on the ball on the pass interference on offense, but everything else has been personal fouls and guys doing things away from the ball that are unnecessary. Illegal block in the back by the receiving team. The, pe the penalty happened. After the kick and before the catch, by rule, the penalty is administered from the spot of the catch, half the distance to the goal. Back for the final 244 of the first half right after this. These two teams combined for 250 yards of offense in the first quarter, just 59 yards of total offense combined in the second. This was not a smart penalty, Ed. Kenzie Ross right here just going to hit Sheldon Brown right in the back. You see the numbers don't throw the block, and to compound it, it was during a fair catch. There was no return on it. And starting field position, the eight-yard line, and Travis Zachary carried out across the 10 to the 14-yard line, tackled by Kalimba Edwards. Each team in possession of all of its timeouts. Clemson would like to get better field position before it thinks about going on the attack. But full fervor. Zachary short of the first down at the 18-yard line. 
Andre Offing made the tackle tonight at 8 Eastern 5 Pacific ABC Sports wraps up its college football triple header for the battle of the rivals number four Florida taking on Chris Winkie and number three Florida State right here on ABC Sports home of the bowl championship series Big third down and one if they don't get it you'd think Carolina would call the timeout and Rambert stumbles down will depend on the spot. Looks from the spot that they don't have it. Lou Holtz walking down there, taking a look to see what's going to happen and deciding whether to take that timeout you mentioned, Sean. Kenny Hardy helping to trip up Rambert. I know you're right. I think he's short. It's going to be very close. Oh, the tip of the football. Now will Coach Bowden be more aggressive? They're still just at the 18-yard line, the 19-yard line. They almost got in trouble there playing it close to the vest. They got to punt that away. South Carolina went up with very good field position and all their timeouts. Maney had a very shaky punt a moment ago for Clemson. Uh, with a slight edge in time of possession. In a very evenly played first half. Pass out of the flat to just Watts. He gets out of bounds to stop the clock. At the 25-yard line, coming up on the MSN Halftime Report, John Saunders and Terry Bowden will have the scores and highlights from around the country on this rivalry Saturday. Plus, they'll preview tonight's epic battle between Florida and Florida State. And of course, those two teams very interested in this game because a South Carolina win here would help Florida's strength of schedule. And a Clemson win would help Florida State's strength of schedule in the BCS rankings. There's Kevin Youngblood wide open. Plenty of room to run after the catch across midfield to the 49 of the Gamecocks. That's a 25 yard pickup. And Woody Dantzler will take advantage of the stoppage in play to move the chains and have them ready to go with 112 left. And I love how they do this on offense for Clemson. They don't always in a hurry up mode, but right now they want to take advantage of the clock and catch South Carolina trying to line up. Still three timeouts left for each team. Rambert, a short gain. You have to use a timeout now. And the Tigers will. The one thing Clemson has to be careful about throwing the ball against this three deep zone is that middle safety can come up and make a play on the ball. Timeout for Clemson, now two left for Coach Powell. Reversing his field. Gets the first down, gets out of bounds. At the 34, and a flag thrown at the end of the play. Near where Dancer went out of bounds. This will be the 12th penalty of the game. by the offense during the, during the run 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul first down that was near the end of the run when it was apparent Dancer was going to head for the sideline so whoever was holding trying to help him mm -hmm. really wasn't going to do much good anyway and turned a positive into a negative for Coach Bowden and it was Kevin Youngblood the freshman wide receiver who was working on that side of the field who was called Second for the holding five. penalty Andre Goodman. Second and five at the 44 yard line. 47 seconds left. Two timeouts left for Clemson. Dancer going deep for Gardner, and it is caught. Flag down to the secondary. There's a jump ball between Gardner and Brown. It actually looked like Brown had the best position to get the ball, but. Gardner ripped it away for a 39 yard game but a late flag thrown in the middle of the field at the 11 yard line. With this type of defense they're calling pass interference it looks like that's Theo Mugros signaling pass interference on us. Against this type auditioning to be a referee <laughs> the signals. 
Against this type of defense, the middle of the field is so dangerous to throw to. That time they worked the edge with Gardner working one on one against Sheldon Brown. And Brown was the guy who dropped two sure interceptions last week against Florida. It looked like he had that ball in his hands as well. A lengthy conversation here. So far, they haven't moved the ball away from the five yard line. There is no Brown. What's interesting about that call Sean is usually when they call the ball being tipped it's at the line of scrimmage so there is no pass interference. This ball is tipped by the defender at the end of the play is why they don't call interference but an excellent job of concentration by Gardner. I don't understand that one at all. I understand your explanation. But... Are they saying that Brown <laughs> yeah, Blue doesn't buy That's it, it Well, there's no way Brown that and tried to inter intercept it who had good position was interfered with because he didn't catch it. <laughs> he wasn't interfered with. Oh, I, so I agree. I'm just saying the only, that's the only way they could have made that call was because he's the only guy who tipped the ball. Well, there's a head scratcher and one that Lou will probably be asking about later as well. Lambert dodged one hit in the backfield from Faison but did not get back to the line of scrimmage. And the clock ticks down to 17 seconds before it's stopped by Clemson. The Tigers have one timeout left. Willie Sams and Anthony Overstreet. A couple of reserve defensive linemen in there. And they combine to make the nice play. The problems that Clemson has had with field goals. Take a shot into the end zone. You're down to one timeout, which you might want to save if you've got to get on there and try a field goal. But with 17 seconds, second down and six, I would take three shots into the end zone. For Lou Holtz defense, they have to change up a little bit now. They're so used to playing that three across back zone. Now you're backed up to your own end zone. You got to play a little more matchup and get in the face of these wide receivers. Season of resurgence for these two programs. Clemson and South Carolina. Clemson started the year eight and all after a six and six season last year. They're guaranteed improvement this year to Tommy Bowden. But then the two losses trying to avoid a third straight loss to end the regular season. Of course South Carolina was seven and one. The back to back losses, so they're trying to avoid the third straight. One on one inside coverage. Dansler pulls up and his throw to the back of the end zone is thrown away. One pump fake, and then with the heat coming on Woodrow, he elected to throw it away. It'll be third down and goal from the six. 12 seconds and one timeout left. Clemson going without the huddle. That's just their normal offense. The clock stopped, but they're getting the coverage they want on the outside. Two big receivers. That's young blood down on the bottom here at six foot four. Possible fade over to that side. Dancer has time. Throws to the corner, and it is incomplete. Intended for Rod Gardner. Andre Goodman had the coverage. Fourth and goal from the six. And they'll bring the field goal unit on. And as Ed mentioned, it's been a shaky season kicking field goals for the Tigers. Aaron Hunt is the kicker. The true freshman, just five out of ten, with a long of 30. Missed two against Georgia Tech, which ultimately gave Georgia Tech the chance to win the game at the end. Jeff Scott is the holder. 22 yard try just about an extra point and Hunt makes it. So three seconds left in the half Clemson retakes the lead 10 to 7. On that third down play Gardner coming out of the end zone to make this catch gets his hands left foot looks like it got down. Quite possibly a catch on the only problem was he was coming out of the end zone it still would have been fourth down that ball never got across the plane of the end zone but at the one yard line you wonder if maybe Tommy Bowden would have taken a chance if that had been called a catch to pound one in. We'll have to have the one foot down in possession the ball it looked like Gardner did but as you said he had come out of the end zone. That's 
look at it again. Make sure he was in fact out of the end zone. He's in the end zone there. When his foot comes down, I think he was back on the yeah, just about the one yard line. It looked like a catch. It did. And Rod Gardner, a guy that NFL scouts have been around here watching film on him, a big guy with great hands. Six foot four, 215 pounds. He walked into our meeting yesterday. And he was we had a couple linebackers come in and he was the biggest of all the guys that we got to talk to. Well, another terrific battle between Clemson and South Carolina the 98th meeting all time dating back to 1896 Clemson leads the all time series 58 35 with four ties the Tigers have won the last three and the visiting team has won eight of the last nine little dribbler up the field. By Tony Lazara and it's covered by John Stamper and only one second came off the clock and the balls at the 44 yard line so if the Holtzes Lou and Skip want to be daring they can launch one down the field here and that was a mistake by Lazara he was just trying to kick it down the field and hope that the clock would run out but it hit a South Carolina player there in the front they downed it end up with great field possession why not take a shot down the field. Well, they're lining up like that's what they're going to do. Four wide receivers and Petty in the shotgun. Clemson taking a note from the South Carolina defense. They actually have four across deep. Just a three man rush. Petty throws it into traffic. It is caught at the half ends as Kelly goes down at the 21 yard line. Halftime Clemson 10 South Carolina 7 ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. And here at Clemson, the Tiger Band on the field at Memorial Stadium, entertaining the crowd. Clemson leads South Carolina 10 to 7 at halftime. An ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. Back at Death Valley at halftime, Clemson on a late first half field goal has a 10 to 7 lead over South Carolina. Sean McDonough along with Ed Cunningham. It's unusual at the end of the half to see both coaches running after the officials, expressing their displeasure, but that's what we saw at the conclusion of the first half. Tommy Bowden patiently waited his turn while Lou Holtz finished complaining. And I think what Lou was upset about was one of the key plays of the half, Ed, that non-offensive pass interference call against Clemson. The flag was picked up. They said the ball was tipped. Certainly it was not tipped here at the line of scrimmage. And Sean, every time you watch it, the ball not tipped, you just realize that it should not have been called. And the official running in right there, it's his flag in his pocket. He's the one who should have made that call. It was right to wave off the, the flag, but to make an excuse like that was a really, really confusing call. It was an official way away from the play who threw the flag. It was picked up and really the explanation seemed to be a cover just to pick up the flag and in essence make the right call in the final analysis. Leslie got a word with Lou. Leslie what did Lou say. Well Lou didn't want to talk much about what he planned on doing in the second half because he was still really hot about what happened with the officials in the end of the first half. He says they call pa offensive pass interference but they say it's tipped. He said it's a 50 yard perfect spiral. But again he didn't want to go into the second half. As for coach Bowden he said twice they've gotten in the red zone and haven't converted. He said they need to score when they get inside. He didn't want to go into what he was upset with about the officials at the end of the first half. He said he talked to him about it and got it all cleared up. Thank you, Leslie. Bernard Rambert returns the opening kickoff of the second half. And wouldn't you know there's a flag on the play. We <laughs> said that repeatedly in the first half as each team was penalized six times. I think what Tommy Bowden was upset about, first of all, during the return, blocking it back by the receiving team. 
It is administered from the spot of the foul at the distance of the goal. First down. First of all, as a coach, you don't want to let the other guy have his say and you not get anything in. But I think he was upset that on the onside kick when the ball was clanging around at the end of the half, there were three seconds when they kicked. The ball bounced around for a while, touched people, and only one second came off the clock to allow South Carolina that chance to throw the ball down the field on the last play of the half. He was holding up three fingers and <laughs> talking about a kick. Well, you mentioned SEC officials. It's uh, Clemson's clock operator who had the slow finger on the clock. So after the walk off on the penalty the Tigers begin at the 10 and Travis Zachary gets very little on first down now the Morgan Stanley Dean winner first half stats and it doesn't get much more even in total yardage than one yard separating the two and it's penalty yards that were hurting Clemson early 45 of those yards came on personal fouls after the play was over they had to get calmed down a little bit in this rival Zachary Struggles out to the 18-yard line. He's about two yards short of the first down. The tackle made by DeAndre Island. Zachary has rushed for 46 yards in the game now. 47 yards officially. He needs 72 to reach 1,000 for the season. There's 25 still to go. And the throw from Dantzler is incomplete. Joe Don Reams was open, but the throw was low, and he couldn't pick it off the top of the grass at the 28-yard line. So three downs and a punt for Clemson to begin the second half. And the one thing about Woody Dansler, he has a very strong arm, and sometimes guys who have strong arms tend to throw the ball with the nose down, and that time he had Joe Don Reams wide open, just fired it, had it there on time, but the nose was down, drove it right into the ground. One very good punt, one poor punt in the first half for Jamie Somani. 58 yarder, the 17 yarder. He had pressure on that punt, got it off. It might have hit a game clock. Tiger saying it's their ball, and it is. Kevin Youngblood recovered the football after it struck a South Carolina player near midfield. It hit Sheldon Brown. And the officials are conferring. They signal Clemson ball, but now they're having another of their numerous conferences today. Derek Watson got in on Somani and might have gotten a piece of it. South Carolina hadn't blocked the punt all year long. Block two last week against Florida. Very clearly, Sean, the ball hits Sheldon Brown as the Clemson defender, that's Kevin Youngblood. No question it hit his foot, but Youngblood's just trying to use his hands to push off. And I don't know what the officials had to talk about. No question that ball should go to Clemson. The ruling is that the player was pushed into contact with the ball. Therefore, there was no contact. That's right. The ball belongs to the receiving team, first and ten. Well, he's absolutely right. And I will say this for Steve Landis, the referee. I might not have agreed with all the calls today, but he is obviously in this crew very well versed in the rules. There have been a couple of complicated calls today that he's explained very well. And he explained that very well. Tommy Bowden doesn't agree, but that's the right call based on the rule, as explained by Steve Landis. The only question was whether he was blocked in before he, if he touched the ball before he was blocked into him, and clearly he wasn't on the replay. Four wide receivers of Big break for South Carolina on the change of the call. Petty throwing it deep, and it is intercepted at the 21-yard line. Alex Hartley's had a sensational game, and now he has his fifth interception of the season and 11th of his career. How many times today have we talked about Alex Hartley is the cover cornerback for Clemson? Cannot play this ball any better. Got a great drop. Was reading the eyes of Petty the whole way. Because of his technique in dropping, he knew he had Kelly in front of him. Wasn't worried about getting run by. Kelly not the fastest receiver, but that just doesn't get any better. Defensive back play one-on-one -on -one from Alex Harden. Three wide 
receivers to the right. Dantzler with the inside handoff to Travis Zachary, a gain of one. I think the big question we had at coming into this game, no question Clemson is vulnerable and they have a lack of confidence in the defense, particularly in the secondary with all the big yardage plays they've given up. The question we had, did South Carolina have enough playmakers on the perimeter to really take advantage of that? And Kelly's really the only threat they have out there, and so far they haven't been able to work much with him. Well, and Skip Holt says, you know, Jermell Kelly is a great receiver, has all the tools except great speed, and Artley that time was kind of cheating a little bit, knowing he had a tough time running by. Dantzler tucks it under and gets very little. It was three downs and a punt of the first Clemson possession. And it went off to a great start on this second possession of the half. Langston Moore, the redshirt freshman who's played much of the year with a broken hand, took down Dantzler. He was a guy, Langston Moore, that Charlie Strong said was really playing well before he broke his hand. Very tough as a defensive lineman. You got a big cast on there trying to fight off those blocks. Third and nine. Two and a half minutes played in the second half. Clemson has not failed in the game. The Tigers lead 10 to 7. Ansler under pressure. Another low throw and an incomplete pass. Rashad Faison had the coverage on Rod Gardner. Rod Thomas brought some pressure. So two possessions, no first downs for Clemson. And another punt. So maybe will have punted twice here in less than three minutes after punting twice the entire first half. And what a fantastic job Charlie Strong, the defensive coordinator, has done for South Carolina. That time they went with a straight across flat man, no safety in the middle of the field, changing things up time and time again on Dantzler. Timeout called by South Carolina. They had 12 men on the field. After the South Carolina timeout, Jamie Somani to punt on fourth down and nine. It's going to happen again. He gets this one off. Ryan Brewer lets it bounce uneventfully this time, and it's down to the 46 yard line by Kevin Johnson after a 33 yard punt. Time now for our courtyard by Marriott moment. We go back to the meeting between these two schools in 1981. South Carolina trailed 15 to 6. Gordon Beckham threw 10 yards to Horace Smith to make it 15-13. And Clemson's Chuck McSwain clinched the win for the Tigers with a 23-yard touchdown run. Clemson won 29-13, capped the perfect 11-0 regular season, went on to beat Nebraska and win the national championship. Courtyard by Marriott moment. Derek Watson struggling just to get back to the line of scrimmage. And he spun out of bounds by Nick Eason, the sophomore defensive end from Lions, Georgia. And it's amazing. Clemson, that was the last January 1 bowl that they've played in until this year. They've already accepted an invitation to the Gator Bowl. 1981 was the last time, and they played for the national championship. That's a long drought for a program like this. South Carolina, terrific second half team this season. Their bowl destination likely will be decided by the result of this game. When they probably go to the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. And a loss, and it would probably be the Peach Bowl. Ryan Brewer, the catch, short of a first down, but into Tiger territory at the 47-yard line. A gain of seven for Brewer, the former Mr. Football in Ohio. He won that honor out of Troy, Ohio, back in 1998. And that's a prestigious award when you think of other recent winners. Charles Woodson, Curtis Enos, Andy Katzenmoyer, Robert Smith, and Bobby Hoyan. who were on that list of Mr. Football in Ohio. Well, he was a running back in high school, rushed for nearly 2,900 yards as a senior. That was pretty deserving, I would say. Option look from Penny, and he lunges toward the necessary yardage. Did he get it? Might require a measurement. Charles Hafley made the tackle. Penny not particularly fleet of foot. And they have a lot of wrinkles now in this offense. Last year, mostly two back. This year, mostly one back, about 80%. As a matter of fact, the Clemson coaches say, hmm, their offense this year <laughs> looks a lot like ours. Perhaps they stole a few wrinkles from our playbook. But, of course, imitation is a form of flattery. And Skip Holtz quickly points out, I ran this offense when I was the head coach at the University of Connecticut. And they also did a lot of studying of Purdue spread offense to get to this. But that one, 
that reeked of Clemson the option out of mm -hmm. the shotgun that looks like a Woody Dantzler play to me. Todd Fitch the wide receivers coach on the headset to skip Holtz Lou Holtz appeared to be authorizing the go for it strategy on fourth down and inches there's skip Holtz the son of the coach successful run as head coach at the University of Connecticut now back with his dad and served on the staff at Notre Dame as well. Just one for four on fourth downs this season of two yards or less so they haven't had much luck in this situation they go to the big backs Travis Lewis in front of Andrew Pinnock. That's 250 in front of 245 pounds. But it's Petty keeping for the first down. Excellent surge by that offensive line. You see the right tackle Melvin Page go ripping right through. And a first down for South Carolina. And this is a part of the offensive line that they've really struggled with in South Carolina. The middle, they've got a couple of tackles they really like. But an excellent job of keeping their pads down. That's Philip Jones, the center. He switches in and out with Scott Brown. Did a really good job of firing off the ball. Jones is questionable for this game with a jaw injury. He was kicked in the jaw in Florida last weekend. Watson back in and running back. And a tough run to the 36 yard line. Gain of seven. Robert Carswell made the tackle. Carswell's the senior safety. Now, the AFLAC trivia question the fewest number of penalties. We'll give you one clue. It was not today in the South Carolina Clemson game. How apropos they make this question up a couple of days before the game. How would they know that we'd have 13 already? I guess it's zero. I mean, I might as well go for, go for none. Yeah, why not? Sharp contrast to today. More than 13 penalties already. Watson. And second and three. Didn't quite get the first down yardage. Got inside the 35. They'll need a yard here on third down. I mentioned Robert Carswell made the tackle on the previous play. We visited with him earlier in the year. He told us he. Grew up a Notre Dame fan, wanted to go to Notre Dame until his dad came here on his recruiting trip and rubbed the rock and ran down to the field and influenced Robert to come to Clemson. And Robert had a very nice conversation with Lee Holtz on the field before the game, a warm embrace, and the two exchanged words for a few moments. First down, Eric Watson, the ball carrier, down to the 32 yard line. Both of these offenses kind of stalling with Reggie Herring's defense bringing the pressure. South Carolina going back to that running game that they used so well in the first quarter. Derek Watson over 100 yards. Of course, a 61 yard touchdown helps that. Interesting the comments of Reggie Herring. We chatted with him this week about South Carolina's resurgence. He said, Yeah, but this is the worst year for the SEC in football in at least 15 years. He said it's a bunch of pitiful offenses and average defenses. Petty rolling out on first and ten. He's going to keep it. He gets back near the line and is tackled along the sideline by Braxton K. Williams. Braxton, the son of Braxton Williams, who was a letter winner on Clemson's teams back in 82 and 83. Bill Petty got up limping after that tackle, Sean. We mentioned his ankles. It looks like he's favoring the right one after the tackle by Williams. Didn't practice much this week because they needed to get him some rest, and I believe he re-entered that right ankle. Second down, 10. Ninth play of the possession. Neither team has scored here in the third quarter. And up and down the field in the first quarter. It's been a defensive struggle since, and there's another interception. Hardly flipped the ball off to Carswell, and he swung down. At the five yard line. So Alex Hartley has two interceptions here in the second half. That time he lateraled off to Carswell, but Carswell couldn't do much with it. Another turnover, and Clemson takes over at its own five. Well, we've been mentioning the entire game how Clemson in the defensive secondary has been struggling. This guy has not been struggling. He has been the glue on the one side, the right side of the formation for the offense. And every time Phil Petty has gone at him, he's paid now twice with an interception. Still 10-7 Clemson, nearly midway through the third quarter in Death Valley. Petty on 
the phone to the coaches upstairs after the interception his second. He's just six out of 13 for 110 yards and they do have the backup quarterback there Timley warming up on the sideline. Dance are going deep out of his own end zone and that one is incomplete. Intended for Rod Gardner and Andre Goodman had the coverage. Another big play receiver has been able to do very much. Gardner two catches 52 yards and Jamel Kelly three catches 62 yards for South Carolina. It was Gardner who started the day needing seven catches to become their all time leading receiver. With 157 for his career exactly the ball carrier. The record holder is Terry Smith and has 162 receptions for Clemson back in the early 90s. The Redskins and the Rams on ABC's Monday Night Football, 9 Eastern Time. And on Sunday night on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern, the Jaguars trying to turn around their disappointing season against the Steelers. They emerge with a great defense this year. Third down, this stumbling Clemson offense. Dantzler on the run incomplete intended for Rod Gardner excellent coverage by Sheldon Brown and it's six straight incomplete passes now thrown by Woody Dantzler and Sheldon Brown is the Alex Ardley of the defensive secondary for South Carolina very good coverage that throw would have had to have been perfect to the outside because Brown was all over Gardner Gardner ran a good route just good coverage. Jamie Somani will punt to Ryan Brewer. They're standing at the 46 yard line of Clemson. So the Gamecocks should get excellent field position. Trailing by three. This time they do not come after Somani. And it's a decent punt. Handled at the 47 by Brewer. And he made it to the 41 before he was driven back and spun around. And he'll spot the ball near the 41 yard line. Kevin Johnson did the dance with Brewer after a 39 yard punt and a five yard return. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee with legendary off road capability. By Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Dr. Pepper bottle. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. By Sears and the Sears National Champion Football Trophy and by Burger King. Got the urge? <laughs> Still Phil Petty at quarterback for South Carolina. Andrew Pinnock, the lone back. And he gets the call. You know, the former Mr. Football, he's from Connecticut, at Bloomfield High School. No gain on the play. Nice job that time by Jason Holloman, defensive tackle for Clemson, who'd missed some time earlier in the season with some injuries. The strongest legs on the team squats over 600 pounds did a really nice job got his pads down drive the offensive lineman in the backfield and give him no way run for the running back and that was very nice of him to let me work in with him at the squat rack in the weight room the other day when we were yeah but I had to have my belt so I could pull some plates <laughs> off second and ten and that's the eye formation Watson with a hard earned yard to the 40 and that's all Chad Carson and Keith Adams the two leading tacklers making the stop for Clemson Chad's a 3.94 grade point average student in biological sciences as we mentioned earlier he's going to concentrate on a possible road scholarship at the end of the semester and definitely has aspirations to play in the NFL we talked to him the other day we said what do you think is going to be tougher he said no question getting a road scholarship will be tougher than making it in the NFL. Carson has nine tackles today out of the gun Petty running out of time throws it away. So the defenses have clearly taken over this game. And the punters who weren't very active in the first half have been busy here in the third quarter. And Reggie Herring who's been criticized a little bit here locally with the struggles of the defense has to be uplifted by what this defense is doing today. Tyler Dean punting to Brian Mance. Very high punt. Mance has to catch it. 
And there was a collision after the catch, but Mance had taken a couple of steps after the catch before he bumped into the Gamecock, and that's the reason there was no flag. 26 yard punt, the field position, the 14 yard line. Clemson takes over from that spot right after this. 25 left in the third quarter. Clemson with the ball at a three point lead. 10 7. That was the score at halftime from the 14 yard line. First and 10. Zachary out of the eye. Back at the 19 for he's pulled back by Andre Offing. The senior from Houston, Texas, who grew up in brutal poverty. In Houston, so bad that for a time he was homeless as a young boy when his mother couldn't afford to pay the rent. The father not in the picture. Andre dropped out of high school for about a month, and teachers and coaches talked him into returning, and now he's playing college football and has his life together. Shannon Wadley made the tackle on Travis Zachary. Out at the 23 yard line. Looks to be a half yard short of the first down. And one thing that's turned around in this program for South Carolina going from 0 and 11 to 7 and 3 is guys like Andre Offen. Sometimes when a new staff comes in, a staff like Lou Holtz brings in, very challenging to the players. Some guys wilt and go away. Andre Offing has flourished in that system. Charlie Strong says he's been the surprise of our defense. Chancellor keeps and has the first down. That's the first first down of the half for Clemson out to the 26 yard line. Nick Stock still signals in the plays. They go quickly. Bernard Rambert, nice move behind the line of scrimmage. He picked up a yard before Anthony Overstreet made the tackle. Time now for the answer to the Aflac trivia question. You're saying zero? One. I'll say one just for the heck of it. Zero. You're right. You cheated again. Back in 1902, because of a train accident, only one official appeared for the game. And he didn't call a penalty. South Carolina won 12 to 6. And a riot broke out after the game. They didn't play again until 1909. Dance will on the roll up. First down, finally pulled down at the 37-yard line by John Stamper. First they played every year since 1909. This is 92 meetings uninterrupted, and that's the longest active uninterrupted rivalry in the South, and the third longest in the nation. Only Kansas and Nebraska with 94 uninterrupted meetings. Minnesota and Wisconsin with 93 in a row without interruption. But longer active streaks. This one, 92, with the game today. Bernard Rambert, the ball carrier, and he gets nothing. The one reason that South Carolina likes this defense, the way they line up, and the way Lou Holtz was sold on this defense was we're going to have our best athletes on the field. We have a lot of good defensive backs and good running linebackers. But Charlie Strong needed a way to not only defend the pass and make some picks. They have, they have 17 interceptions coming into today's game. Eight last year, so they made those interceptions, but they shut down the running lanes so quickly. Even if there's a gap, it's gone right away. Just a three-man rush. The throw underneath, a little bit behind Travis Zachary. Well, you have to think Charlie Strong is emerging as one of the bright young stars in coaching. Just 40 years old. And his on Lou holds his staff at Notre Dame. And he kept in touch with Lou when Lou was away from coaching and in television. And one of the times they spoke is, well, you're going to get back into coaching. So, Charlie, if I do, get ready to be a defensive coordinator. He thought the world of Charlie when he worked for him at Notre Dame. And Lou was true to his world. And he got the job at South Carolina. Brought Charlie Strong with him as the defensive coordinator. And his defense has played very well today. They didn't get to Dantzler. They brought some people. The ball thrown up for grabs. Grinder fell down, and it's an incomplete pass. Andre Goodman had a great chance for the interception. One of the things Coach Strong was bemoaning when we spoke with him this week, they dropped four balls that should have been interceptions last week down at Florida, and that would have been a huge difference in the game if they had been able to come up with those catches. This is a second one. Sheldon Brown who dropped two of those interceptions against Florida that time. Goodman has a shot at it and not able to come down. It was one of those drops by Rashad Faison when it was 21 to 3. 
South Carolina hit Florida on the ropes. He dropped one in the flat. It would have been a touchdown. He only would have had to run about 20 yards for a score. He would have made it 27 or 28 to 3. But he dropped it. Florida went down and scored in that possession. Booming punt by Somini. Brewer decides to forego the fair catch. Avoids a couple of tacklers. Ryan Brewer all the way out to the 40-yard line. 42-yard punt, 19-yard return. Ryan Brewer, who's listed as a tailback on their depth chart, plays wide receiver, punter. He's punted three times this season. Punt returner, he does everything. He's kind of an in-between guy. This time, an excellent job. Shows the vision of a running back finding his wall and then making a Clemson defender miss. Gets to the outside, still using his vision, trying to get back to where there might be a hole. A nice return by Brewer. Skip Holtz refers to Brewer as their utility man. He says he's the kind of guy you look at him, he's not fast enough, he's not big enough, but everywhere you put him, he does the job and does it very well. Petty out of the shotgun. On target with that throw. Across midfield with a first down is Ryan Brewer. Mentioned he plays everywhere. He was a running back in high school when he was Mr. Football in Ohio. And in fact, he has the state record for rushing yards in one season in Ohio. 2,864 yards as a senior in Troy, Ohio. And for his career, he rushed for more than 7,600 yards. And he scored 761 points in four years. Well, Ohio Prep Magazine went further than just giving him Mr. Football of his senior year. They called him the prep player of the decade in the 90s in the state of Ohio. And he's one of the best states in the country for high school football. North Carolina. First down, that's batted in the air. Terry Bryant batted it, and Terry Jolly picked it off. Three interceptions in the quarter thrown by Phil Petty. And the advantage in field position throughout this third quarter for South Carolina, but the Gamecocks haven't been able to do anything with it, thanks largely to the turnovers. Sometimes you got to use your head and then other parts of your body. Terry Bryant does an excellent job of reading the eyes of the quarterback. He gets up and knocks the ball down. Now, I don't think he means to kick this ball up in the air. He's kind of in a little zone. Maybe he did. He kicked that left foot up as the ball was going down. That's a heads up play. Doing two things, backing up and knocking the ball down and then kicking it up into your teammates' hands. And this Clemson offense needed something to help it turn the field position. The defense does it for them, and here's Dantzler. Tackled by Rashad Faison, but it's a first down to the 38-yard line of South Carolina. A run of 13 for Woody Dantzler. The one thing I've noticed about Woody today, Sean, is how quickly he gets up after being tackled. It's that mental thing that I think he's trying to keep that ankle out of his head. And they go quickly. And it's Zachary, turning the corner, another first down. Another bombs at the 25-yard line, perhaps the 24. Andre Offing made the tackle. John, you mentioned earlier that Rich Rodriguez caused this a rhythm offense. You notice when things start going their way, they have a turnover by their defense, a nice play by Dancer, get in, snap it quick, and here comes another play. A defense, you start to tire and you can't chase as well. On the 24, Zachary. Bounced off the pile. One was tackled by Kalimba Edwards. On Thanksgiving Friday, ABC Sports has a great college football coming up. It kicks off at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, when Colorado faces Eric Crouch in number 10, Nebraska. Then at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, number 23, Texas A&M, takes on number 15, Texas. And the renewal of that great rivalry all here on ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Second and eight from the 21. Clemson leads by three, threatening to add to that lead. Dantzler tripped up from behind, flagged down at the line of scrimmage. The play stands. It's a first down for Clemson at the 11. And Cleveland Pinkney might have prevented Dantzler from rumbling into the end zone. The flag thrown where you would expect a holding call. The offensive line. Theo Mugros. On the offense, 10 yard penalty. Theo Mugros is always giving the signal. He told me early he was giving the holding of the whole way. Well, he's auditioning to be an official <laughs> when his playing days are over. He's a graduate student Second here now from Tarpon Springs, Florida. He earned his degree in marketing in three and a half years. 
and is working toward a master's in education. The back of the 30 yard line. Second and 16. Under a minute remaining third quarter. A lot of movement by that defense. Dantzler changing the play. Dance is going to keep it. Of his own offensive lineman Mugros. And that helped the Gamecocks take him down for a minimal game. There is a flag on the play. There's Mugros again, indicating it's a personal foul. <laughs> we don't need Steve Land as the ref. No, we don't. The Merrick Neal went over, put his arm around his colleague on the officiating crew. He's already graduated. He's got to start thinking about a job. He knows all the signals. He has pretty good form. After the play was over, personal foul in him. Mm. The fourth personal foul penalty on the Gamecocks today could not have come at a worse time. Clemson offense finally gets a little something going. They didn't need much help, and Lou Holtz's squad just gave him some. And the walk off to the 15 yard line, just inside the 15. The pitch back to Zachary, avoids the traffic behind the line, and gets a yard or two. Dennis Quinn pulled him down. And what might be the last play of the quarter. Ordinarily it would be, but with as quickly as Clemson operates, they might get another off. And that puts Zachary, the last couple of rushing plays, over a thousand for the season. He becomes the eighth different player to rush for a thousand yards in one season for Clemson. The end of the third quarter, the score. 10-7 Clemson. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Started out like it was going to be a shootout. It's developed into a defensive struggle. Whoa. <laughs> will Merritt. Uh. <laughs> More than a little anxious to be a pulling guard. <laughs> well, I think he went in motion. The only problem is an offensive lineman can't go in motion. Movement by the offensive line. Five yard penalty. Second down. Will Merritt always wanted to play tight end and shift from one side to the other. This big problem. He's engaged to be married. His fiance's family are big <laughs> South Carolina fans, so he's been trying to get the Atkinses uh, to become. A Clemson fan. He said he's made a little leeway. He was thinking maybe his future father-in-law would run a little orange to the game today. Back at the 18-yard line, second down, 14. Gardner with the underneath pass and got the penalty yardage back. His third catch of the day. Cleveland Pinkney made the tackle. What a nice game Cleveland Pinkney's been playing. We've talked about Alex Ardley, the defensive back. Nose guard right here in the middle of your screen just does a fantastic job working one on one comes all the way from the middle of the field. The screen was set up perfectly. You have to have good inside out pursuit. But your nose guard over there running like that. That's the kind of hustle you need. Big play here. Big difference at this juncture between a field goal and a touchdown. Comes in leading by three and trying to add to it. Dancer surveyed the defense. Marked out some signals. The rush well defended with the pass batted down and nearly picked off by DeAndre Island. And this is where this defense of Charlie Strong really reads the eyes of the quarterback. The middle safety was Island. He saw that Woody Danzer was going for the audible and cheated over to that side. Nearly picks that. If he picks that one, Sean, another dropped interception. I'm not sure he doesn't go all the way. And both sides capable of trickery on special teams. Jeff Scott is the holder for Aaron Hunt. He's one for one today. The 30 yard attempt that matches longest of the season and it is good. The lead now six for the Clemson Tigers. Clemson looking for its fourth straight win in this rivalry. Leads South Carolina by six. A long way to go. 14.05 remaining as Tony Lazara kicks off. Short kickoff down to Derek Watson at the 10. 
runs and kickoff coverage has been excellent all day, and that's the case again today as he's out of bounds at the 22. Let's check in with John Saunders at Times Square Stadium. John, this is a Burger King update. Oregon, Oregon State, Oregon trying to win and go to the Rose Bowl. Ken Simonton of the Beavers, though, 20 yards on this touchdown run, opening up a 23-7 lead. They missed the point after, and the Beavers have just pulled off an interception. Well, I'll get to an establishment just in time to see if my Huskies can beat Washington State and sneak into the Rose Bowl. Phil Petty has struggled at quarterback. He's still in there. Derek Watson took the pitch and didn't go anywhere. Chad Carson made the tackle. Here in the second half, Petty's two out of six for 18 yards and three interceptions. They've had great improvement at South Carolina, a lot of different places, but in the last few ball games against Tennessee and Florida, they only had one offensive touchdown in each one of those ball games. And here today, the same can be said. They need to pick up something down 13-7. This is that point in the game where you can't continue to punt to Clemson. Reverse, Ryan Brewer. Nice move. Looked like he was dead at the line of scrimmage. Instead, it's a first down. And he got banged down by Robert Carswell. With help from Braxton K. Williams. 14-yard game, and it looked like it wasn't going to go for anything. Phil Petty tries to get a block over on the left side of your screen. Throws a whiff on Eason, but Brewer shakes Eason out of his shoes. Hardly goes down trying to make the tackle, but Brewer, not the fastest guy, not the strongest guy, but has great vision and really nice moves. From the 36, first and 10. Watson. Tackled by Rodney Thomas. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game. From each team, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to the University's General Scholarship Fund. Watching me, and watching film and watching this game, looks like he's more comfortable running outside. Doesn't seem to be quite as efficient up the middle. And that's why he's had a little more success out of the two back because they can attack those angles off the tackle's edge with a lead blocker in front of him. He's got to be able to run downhill, and he has the speed, Sean, to get to the outside. Well, apparently there was a flag. Illegal formation by the offense. Only six men on the line. Five yard penalty. First down over. Sometimes in the spread offense, those are things that you almost have to accept that you're going to have one or two misalignments in a game because there are so many different formations that you come out in, so many different receivers who have to know, am I on the line, am I off the line? That's going to happen in this type of offense. They chose first and 15 instead of second and 10. Petty has a man. Short of a first down, Brian Scott. But a good gain on first and 15 out to the 42 yard line, a gain of 11. Second catch for Brian Scott, the junior from Darlington, South Carolina. And that's the first time South Carolina has gone to the other side against Daryl Crutchfield. Alex Ardley over there lined up to the offensive right. Offense's right has been so good that now you have to start looking at the other side. Second and four, Watson. Again, not doing much inside. Chad Carson there. Robert Carswell came to the aid of Carson. His dad, Tom, played at Georgia Tech. Looked like Chad might have taken a blow in the midsection there. And he's heading off. Rodney Thomas takes his place. A big third down now. And the crowd back into him. Third and short, your middle linebacker and leading tackler is not obviously the guy that you want standing on the sideline. Third and three, they'll go out of the gun. Three receivers to the left. Just a three-man rush. Petty has, Watson has a first down. In the Tiger territory to the 41-yard line. Bryant McNeil, the reserve defensive lineman, made the tackle. First catch of the day for Watson. 
Clemson giving a little different look to South Carolina with a zone. It's Gary Childress is going to drop out right here. So you got a three man rush. Petty with plenty of time finds the dump off. But Childress, of course, is a defensive lineman, not used to being in coverage, can't get up and make the tackle. Sometimes I think, Sean, I'd rather have a linebacker back there covering them instead of trying to fool with the zone. Yeah. There's a 16 yard gain. Again, nothing doing inside for Watson. Terry Jolly with help from Keith Adams. Going back to Keith Adams, how he got knocked out this week in practice when we were talking to Tommy Bowden. He said, This guy practices so hard all the time. He gets little nicks and bruises. Of course, a concussion is not a nick or bruise, but just goes full motor seven days a week. He had a Clemson record 27 tackles last year in the game at South Carolina, the Clemson win. A showing blitz on second. The catch made by James Atkinson. He's pulled down along the far sideline inbounds at the 36 yard line. His second catch, about five yards short of the first down. Alex Ardley made the tackle. And the one thing Carolina has done very well today, their offensive line has picked up those outside blitzes extremely well. That time Keith Adams came and Melvin Page for right tackle through a really nice cut block. It was a three step drop to give a window of opportunity for Petty to throw through. Third down and five. They converted a third and three a moment ago. He's changing the play. He has time. Petty throws for Brewer. First down. To the 29 yard line. Third catch for Ryan Brewer. Charles Hafley made the tackle. When you've got a guy like Brewer that can do this many things, really nice play. He runs out over the flat. Hafley, the strong safety, has to worry about the run just for a second. South Carolina was in the I formation. He's got a peek in there. He has run support to that side, and he's late getting out on Brewer. First and ten, game talks down by six. Petty, great protection throws, incomplete. Looking for Jamel Kelly. Brian Mance had the coverage. If time permits, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. Boy, Sean Petty, if he would have been just a little more patient on that pump fake, they had Brian Scott running free towards the end zone. The defensive backs from Clemson bit on the fake. Petty came back, got a little impatient with the pump fake, but that was a touchdown if he'd have stayed with him. First incompletion on this drive for Petty. Struggled most of the half. But he made four completions in a row before that throw. Second and ten from the 29. They can't get anything from Watson now. Jason Holloman dropped the play for a loss. And winning the battle up front, the Clemson Tiger defensive line, at least on the running plays, against this South Carolina offensive line, which has done a good job today considering that they have a lot of people moving into different positions due to injury. And Jason Holloman, a guy that Reggie Herring was so glad to get back after that injury, a real plugger in the middle. You mentioned how this defensive line just set up to let the linebackers roam. He's a guy who can make some plays. Another third down. Petty toward the end zone. It is incomplete. Flag thrown. Daryl Crutchfield had the coverage. And he's going to be flagged for pass interference. It looked like he might have had a hold of the arm of Jamel Kelly. Inside the five yard line. Crutchfield's a guy whose confidence has been a little shaken in the last few ball games. Good play on the ball, left hand. Oh, Sean. I, you know, he's turning around. I know he's got the first down, but they're both jockeying for position. You can't hold your left arm up like that, though. And yeah, from that end, you're right. He's got his right arm. Yeah, from the Kelly other end. He can't get his right arm up because right. the left arm of Crutchfield is. Holding it down from the other angle, I couldn't tell that he was holding that arm down so much. But good position by Crutchfield, and those are the things that again continue to hurt your confidence as a defensive back. 8:22 remaining. Touchdown in the extra point would give South Carolina the lead. 
Watson bounces off the action inside. Fumble! It's near the sideline. And the Gamecocks got it back. Looked like Thomas Hill to tight end. Recovered the fumble. Looked like Watson was in open space when he fumbled the football as well. Charles Hafley was there for Clemson. You mentioned earlier how much better Watson looks breaking it outside. A good job by Clemson. Good stiff arm and just didn't tuck that ball away. Didn't have it tight enough against his body. And great hustle by the tight end Hill following the play and making a big recovery. Great shot of it. It looked like Carswell had the best shot at the fumble originally. Pinnock up the middle. On second and two, he got very little. Keith Adams made the tackle. We're under seven and a half minutes remaining now. Two timeouts left for South Carolina, and Clemson has all three. It's almost like a modern day Mr. Inside and Mr. Outside with Pinnock and Watson. You've got your pounder, your bruiser, and Pinnock when you've got short yardage and your big people in. And you've got Watson who can bounce it out, out and take it the distance. And another third down. Carolina in the red zone for the first time today. They convert on a third and one. Pinnock the first down, first and goal, South Carolina from just inside the three. What a nice job. We've talked about this offensive line. The left side is what South Carolina is relying on. You've got Hall and Laurel Johnson, two 300 pounders. They've been mixing things up in the middle of that offensive line, but that left side paved the way that time. First and goal, game Cox from the three. Pinnock, no gain. Keith Adams there, Charles Hafley up from his safety position. And at this point of the game, Sean, you've got to start thinking about, you know, you're at the four yard line. You get everybody bunched in the middle there. I know this is what Lou Holtz has always done as a coach is bunch everybody in to play power football. But against this defense on the four yard line, think about spreading out some kind of play action fake. Pinnock slipped down. Looked like he had a seam with Travis Lewis, the fullback, leading the way. That looked promising for South Carolina, but Pinnock, as he went to make the cut, slipped down. And now you have third down, and now you have to bring all your people in, your skill position guys, wide receivers, to go to the spread because Pinnock slipped down, whereas I think he could have done that a little earlier when you're just at that five-yard line. It's very tough to get with this defensive Clemson. The strength is in the middle with their linebackers and defensive tackles. Floyd, I think if he didn't slip, it was going to be a touchdown. Looked like he had the gap there, had the blocker sealing the play. Timeout called by South Carolina, leaving the Gamecocks with only one. 5-19 remaining, and a huge third and goal upcoming when we come back. Carolina's been terrific on third down on this drive. Here's another third and goal from the five. 16th play of the drive. Petty throwing the feed, and it is incomplete. Intended for Brian Scott. Charles Hafley had the coverage. And a decision for Lou Holtz. He has the shaky field goal situation. He only has one timeout left. Top of your screen right here, you got the one-on-one -on -one fade. Good coverage by Hafley, turning and running. Is no face guarding in college football. He does not have to turn around and watch the ball. But Lou Holtz is making this decision, Sean, I think based on the fact that he doesn't believe in his kicking game. If he has a kicker, I think he probably plays the percentages and takes Because if you kick now, then you leave yourself in a situation of rely perhaps on another kick exactly. to tie the game. You don't get it. Your defense has played well, play field position. Hope you get it back and score a touchdown. Petty throwing the fade the other way. Flag thrown. They were holding the arm of Jamel Kelly again. And it's the same man who was holding him a moment ago. Darrell Crutchfield called for the interference in the end zone. And or is it against Kelly? The Clemson players are celebrating. Three times in the last two ball games, Florida last week and this week, as we look at Kelly, might have pushed Crutchfield a 
little bit as he was trying to get separation to catch the fade. Wow. But that's three times in this game and the Florida game that inside the five-yard line in the fourth quarter, uh, they couldn't get in the end zone. <laughs> looked like he couldn't get his left arm up Ed. Mm -hmm. Because it was being held by Crutchfield. And apparently they said Kelly was holding Crutchfield's arm down. Zachary ahead for two yards. Five minutes left. And that was reminiscent of last week against Florida when South Carolina twice was down inside the five yard line late in the game and could not punch it in. And even though they were down 20 at the time, Luke thought that that happening at the end of that ball game was really what took some fire out of his team. They played so well early and then kind of went away for two quarters, had a chance to make it at least a ball game. Took some wind out of their sails, but not being able to get in. And the defense has been terrific for South Carolina. They need another good stop. Zachary bouncing off a couple of tacklers near the line of scrimmage. He's down short of the first down at the 13. They need the 16 for a first down, so it'll be third down and three. Andre Island and Sheldon Brown made the tackle. One of the reasons Charlie Strong went to this defensive alignment was to cause confusion and create turnovers. And he needs one here. Clemson with a third and short. They're in their total regular offense. They have not pulled out of the playbook at all trying to protect this lead. And in a situation here with one timeout left for South Carolina. A first down or two. Huge. A lot of confusion. Did they get the timeout before the play clock expired? Yes. 3.43 remaining. Clemson leading by six. After the Clemson timeout, third down and three. Kansler beats it and gets stopped short of the first down. Looked like they were dangerously close to a face mask on that South Carolina defense. Shannon Wadley, the primary tackler at the 15. They needed the 16. Cleveland Pinckney also in on the stop. Fourth down and one. And Lou Holtz installed a block punt in their week off before the Florida game. Of course, we all know who that paid off with two blocks. And they've got all the guys up on the line of scrimmage like they're going to come after Sumaney. They have to make sure they stay on side. Jumping offside would be a critical error right here. Sumaney, a low wobbly punt. Returnable. Brewer trying to get outside to the right. Didn't get much. Excellent coverage. 43 yard punt. Four yard return. Braxton K. Williams made the tackle. Back for the final 246 from Death Valley right after this. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. By Budweiser with the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. By the Discover card, there's always something more to discover. And by Quest, the communications to change everything. Well, Lou Holtz got what he was looking for when he decided to go for it on fourth down and goal. He needed his defense to hold on three downs, get the ball back in decent field position. He has just the one timeout left. Kenny hasn't had a great day, but he can make up for it with one heroic throw. It won't be that one. Out of bounds. And intended for Willis Ham. First time they've thrown in his direction today. And for South Carolina, this is a very tough spot to be in offensively. 240 left, one timeout. Clemson has two timeouts. Get down the field, get into scoring range, but you've got to eat a little bit of this clock. You don't want to leave Clemson with too much time because a score and Clemson would go down and kick a field goal to win it. Petty has time, throws, has his receiver. Brian Scott, first down to the 40-yard line. Two and a half minutes left. Clock stops as they move the chains. 14-yard gain. 
On Fitch, the wide receivers coach signals in the play. So it's nice about running this type of offense. You're always almost in that hurry up mode, so it's nothing new to you. Eddie out of the gun. Almost no rush, and still they complete the pass. Mel Kelly inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. His fourth catch, 23 yards on that one. Looked like they weren't even trying to rush at all. Those who were along the line of scrimmage did nothing. That's Alex Ardley on coverage, and Carswell is the safety. Ardley playing the outside coverage, knowing he has a two-deep zone help. Carswell not able to get over in time to make a play on the ball. Under two minutes left. The delay to Watson. Bouncing outside. Down to the eight-yard line. About a yard short of the first down. Alex Ardley made the tackle. And at some point, Tommy Bowden needs to start thinking about using his timeouts to save some of this clock. You're not throwing in the towel saying, okay, we're guaranteeing that Carolina's going to score, but you've got to start saving some of this time. There's plenty of time in the situation South Carolina's in. Inside the 10, they have a timeout left. It's Clemson that might need the time. Should South Carolina score? Second down and two. Out of the gun. Spread formation, four receivers. Watson to the left of Petty. Petty, pump fake, throws, incomplete. Flag thrown. It's thrown over the head of Jamel Kelly. Alex Ardley had the coverage and might have given him a shove in the back. But we're going to stop guessing on these <laughs> yes, uh, pass interference flags <laughs> because what it looks like from here and what it has looked like to the officials today have been sometimes at odds. My question is, is that ball catchable, Sean? If this is defensive pass interference, that ball, Petty looked like he was almost throwing it away. By the defense. I don't think he was. And I think without the shove in the back, it doesn't appear to be uncatchable. He can't continue. Well, you're right. <laughs> he didn't want to continue toward the ball. Yeah. It was very high, but that shove certainly prevented him from making any move in that direction. Anyway, from the two, Watson jarred loose from the football. It's in the end zone. Touchdown! Recovered by the Gamecocks. Watson extended the ball to the goal line. Almost a fatal error. Adams knocked it out. The ball was recovered by Thomas Hill for a touchdown to tie the game. Second fumble recovery by Hill here in the late moments of the fourth quarter. This one for a touchdown. A great hit on the ball by Keith Adams right on the helmet. Pops it forward and Hill, the second heads up play falling on a football. The last time he kept the drive alive deep in the territory. This time for six points. Now Corsi, the walk on senior in just his second game as the kicker. He'll have to wait for one of the most important extra points in the history of this rivalry. 59 seconds to go. 13 all to score. Before the play, movement by the offensive line. Five yard penalty. We put the time. Well, earlier penalty forced a 35 yard extra point by Corsi. This one's just a five yard walk off, but now a 25 yard extra point. They've had kicking problems all week. Corsi took over last week in Florida. With the problems all season. Low line drive, but right down the middle. And South Carolina leads by a point with 59 seconds to go. Jason Corsi walked on to the team during his sophomore year because he had a friend who was going to try out as a long snapper, as a walk-on. Of course, he went with him, <laughs> tried out his kicker, got involved in the program, had no action, essentially, except for a kickoff man. Until last week when he kicked the extra points, did not have a field goal attempt, missed his only field goal try today, but has made the extra points. So he never
never envisioned that when this season began that he'd be in this situation in this rivalry. And the reason he was put in this situation was pretty much blind luck, Sean. That ball pops out with that many orange jerseys around. You would assume that somebody from Clemson would have fallen on it. Imagine the mixed emotions and how quickly they changed for a head coach. Ball comes out, he thinks, oh no, we blew another opportunity inside the five. Oh, wait a minute, we scored. Well, Lou's not at Notre Dame anymore, but apparently he still has some of the luck of the Irish on his side, including the performance by the kicker today. And they elect to kick it all the way downfield. Ryan Mance. Still on his feet and all the way out to the 32. Jeremiah Garrison made the tackle. Clemson has two timeouts remaining. Now bear in mind their field goal kicking is very shaky as well. Aaron Hunt here in the fourth quarter kicked a 31 yarder and that is his longest of the season and the longest of his career. He's a true freshman. Brian Mance gives great field position as Clemson offense Sean but if they get inside the 40 yard line I wouldn't be surprised if they take a few shots in the end zone because of the kicking problems. Mansler zings it over the middle Travis Zachary couldn't get outside and that's going to be a costly play in terms of a time so costly they'll use one of the timeouts it would have taken a long time to line back up 38 seconds left. In fact, Bowden has so little confidence in the freshman kicker Hunt at the longest attempt of the year 39 yards from Aaron Hunt so if it comes down to a long try to win the game by the field goal kicker it'll be uncharted territory and the thing working in the favor of Clemson is the way that South Carolina Carolina likes to play defense the outside is usually where you're going to attack them with the pass anyway so you can save that time out. Well this is just the appetizer it's a mighty tasty appetizer for Florida and Florida State number four versus number three in the BCS rankings it's tonight at eight so much at stake in that one the positioning in the BCS the outcome of this one affects the strength of schedule for those two teams there's Chris Winky right there with Josh Heupel it seems among the two top candidates for the Heisman Trophy. Second and five. One timeout left now for Clemson. From the 37, Dantzler flush from the pocket. He's out of bounds near the 44-yard line. Andre Offing chased him out. Cleveland Pinkney applied the pressure. Out of bounds with 32 seconds left. And even though Woody Dantzler didn't get to finish the last two ball games, they... Tommy Bowden didn't think he was going to be able to finish this one. It's that left ankle that they were concerned about, but here in the fourth quarter, as he runs away from Pinckney, it's very obvious that he's back close to 100%. 32 seconds left from the 44-yard line. Dancer going deep for Gardner. Incomplete. A lot of flags thrown on the perimeter today for pass interference on each side. On that play, they seem to let a lot of contact go. Gardner with Andre Goodman in coverage. But with a free safety in the middle, that's where this defense, it's not really vulnerable, but that's really the only place you're going to take a chance. You can throw things to the middle because the clock will stop first down, but so dangerous against this defense with that middle safety, an interception can happen any time if he reads the quarterback's eyes. 26 seconds left, second and 10. Clemson down by a point of its own 44. Dantzler in trouble, running for the sideline. He slipped down in bounds right before he's going to get to the sideline. They have to use their last timeout. Cecil Caldwell was chasing him. Dantzler was about to run out of bounds to stop the clock and preserve that timeout, but he slipped. Very obvious Lou Holtz has this team in very good condition. Not a very deep South Carolina defense. Dan's were trying to make a cut. We've seen a few guys slip on this field today. It was raining a few days before the game, but this South Carolina defense, great hustle all day. Clemson is out of timeouts. We're really up against it now. Monday night football, 9 Eastern time. The Redskins and the Rams. Two of the powers in the NFC. 
And of course, Sunday Night Football on ESPN. The Jaguars and the Steelers. That's at 8.30 tomorrow night on ESPN, 8.30 Eastern Time. Clemson has to pick up somewhere near 40 yards to be real comfortable with their true freshman trying this kick. The good to... thing about the college rules for Tommy Bowden, if they get a first down, they can stop the clock so they can run up and spike it. Mm -hmm. They need the first down first. Third down and 12. Hansler going for a bunch for Gardner. Lots of pushing. He's pushing. He has it! At the eight-yard line, Rod Gardner. Andre Goodman had the coverage. Now, was he out of bounds, or did they just stop it to move the chains? Clemson taking no chances, racing to the line of scrimmage. 49-yard gain. They're going to wind the clock. He was not out of bounds. So Dantzler spikes it, eight seconds left. Sean, with seven seconds left, they can take a shot. They're sending in Hunt right now. Close enough that they figure the freshman can make it. Aaron Hunt, two for two today. That 31-yarder was today. It was the longest attempt of the year, just 39 yards. He's now seven for 12 on the season in field goals. The true freshman from Oak Ridge, Tennessee. In position to be a hero because of this catch by Gardner. And Sean, you know, they've been calling stuff all day. All day. You know, I, I agree, let guys play, but if you're going to call it one way all day and then at the end. They played called some ticket tack stuff yes, they all day. Have. And, and that, that was a pretty good shove to shed the defender that went unflagged. No question. And if you're going to call it one way the entire day and then it comes down to the end of the game, I think you've got to call it the yep. same way. Second down here, so if it's a bad snap, they could theoretically spike it and get another chance. The holder is Jeff Scott. He is the son of Brad Scott, the former head coach at South Carolina, Lou Holtz's predecessor, now an assistant coach at Clemson. And obviously that didn't sit very well <laughs> with some of the Gamecock folks when Coach Scott change the lead but when they tell you you're fired you need to get a job you have a family including Jeff to support and now coach Scott's son a key part of one of the most important plays in this rivalry Aaron Hunt up and good from 25 yards The snap was perfect, the hold was perfect, and the true freshman who has struggled all season long, the Georgia Tech two misses not far removed in his memory, makes the huge kick, biggest kick of his early career. They didn't want a celebration, apparently, and once he uh, enjoyed the moment, he chased some of his players back onto the sideline and shoved a couple of them. Well, well good for Aaron Hunt. We mentioned Coach Bob doesn't have much faith in the kicking game this year, nor is Coach Holtz on his side. And Lou will be thinking about a couple of pass interference calls and non-pass interference calls throughout the day that really have been the major factor in this game. And some of the weird calls we've seen, Sean, I agree with you. That one Rod Gardner made a great play by Gardner. Don't take it away from him. The receiver is going to be physical and try to make a play. But if you're going to call the ones you called earlier, I think you have to call Gardner for pushing off. There the flags end. for pass interference on the offense today for less contact than what we saw on that play involving Gardner that was the key play in the game. It set up the winning field goal. Winning field goal and thus disaster strikes the Tigers here in the last three seconds. How about on rivalry weekend? You get a little Cal Stanford drill here by South Carolina. Start pitching around, see if he can't return. Lou 
Buchholz said his team heartbroken after the last second loss to Tennessee, decimated after Florida. One can only imagine what they'll be feeling after this. Tony Lazare kicks off. Watson has some running room. Still on his feet, laterals it. The ball's on the ground, a good lateral, and Brian Brewer had some running room. But it was an errant pitch. Corey Alexander fell on it to end the game, and they stormed the field. Chevrolet players of the game, Andre Offing of South Carolina. He had 13 tackles. A great effort by their defense all day. And Aaron Hunt, the true freshman field goal kicker. Three for three in field goals, including the game winner in the final seven seconds. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund in the name of these two players. So Clemson concludes the regular season at nine and two. Dissipating, disappointing third straight loss for South Carolina, seven and four. Pandemonium here in Death Valley. Clemson wins for the fourth year in a row in this rivalry. Looked like South Carolina had victory in its grasp when it scored the go-ahead touchdown with 59 seconds left. The Clemson wins it. Here's Leslie Goodell. Coach, what an exciting win for you. Can you put this whole thing into words? Well, you know, uh, we, we lost one like it early against Georgia Tech, and it feels good to get one. If you stay in long enough, you'll win your share of those and lose them. I thought South Carolina's play extremely hard, so did our guys, two last minute. Different feeling in here because of the rivalry? You, well, yeah, you know, in-state recruiting rivalry. you got to live with it 365 days a year, so it's a big win. For Woody Dancer not being 100%, he should look pretty good today. Yeah, he was not on his normal game, but uh, he played good enough for us to win. If you look at the season as a whole, are you happy with how you guys have played? Yeah, you know, in the second year, nine wins. It hadn't been done here in 10 years. I'm real happy for the seniors. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Once again, the final score, Clemson 16, South Carolina 14. Stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report. John Saunders and Terry Bowden will have all of today's scores and highlights. Be with us tonight as the number four Florida Gators take on number three Florida State live at 8 p.m. ABC is online at ESPN.com, keyword ABC College Football. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence. to be third down 12 but that's not the important thing right now the important thing is they're down one with only 19 ticks left on the clock and they must get at least in the field goal range for an opportunity to win this thing and the prospects of that don't look good at this stage young blood left Gardner to the right rolling left looking to throw deep down the middle Gardner's there and it is Kill the ball now. Look at Rod. Big time players make big plays in big games. Oh my, I'm shaking down here, guys.